So um, today, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I thought I would paint this little robin's nest. So this little robin's nest was um, greeting me at my front door one day. It, um, I had this little uh, plant feeder right by my front door and it um, didn't have a plant on it and uh, Robin thought ah, there's a good place to put a nest. <laughs> so it was sort of like right at eye level and, and I was able to watch these little birds from nothing to flying the nest and it was it was great. So anyway three little three little eggs here and um, and they're they're typical robin so they're nice and bright blue and they um, the nest is pretty deep but what I want to do here with this painting is I want to show how the um, the little the little lines of the the grasses and things like that are actually lighter than uh, you know the little gaps in between so I see people and they're, they're painting and they paint the nest and it, it's a lot of dark twigs but then between the twigs is, is these white paper and it's kind of weird. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to my main camera. Oh no, it's not working. Yes it is. Okay. Whew. All right. I have softened up my paints. Most of my paints are Da Vinci. I do have, um, I do have a couple of Windsor Newton in here as well and uh, I can um, oops, oops I just closed something there sorry uh, yeah so I have I have a few Windsor Newton in here but it's mostly Da Vinci paint um, Da Vinci is a, a really good sort of moderately priced artist quality and so I, I chose that for a lot of my paints, um, not so much to save myself money, but save money for my students because a lot of my students, um, you know, especially if they're starting out, uh, don't want to pay top dollar uh, for their paints. So um, anyway, my paper, let me move over here a little bit. My paper is 140 pound cold press arches paper and I have uh, soaked it in water for about you know two three minutes or something like that and then while and then I let the excess um, water drip off and then I just lay it down really quick and staple it all the way around and then several hours later when it's completely dry it's tight again because at first it wrinkles and then it's tight and then uh, stapled it down when it's dry I can tape over the edges that'll give me a nice clean edge so what I started off doing this morning, I thought I was live, but I wasn't, and um, I masked off three little eggs that are in the nest. So and I just did a really rough drawing here and everything. Now, obviously, I'm not going to I'm not going to draw and paint every one of these um, little grasses and twigs and things like that. That would that's just crazy. But. I want to get a, a an overall wash down in here to begin with and I don't want it boring like this is a brown nest and it's brown so I could paint it brown and, and it would look like look you know very much like a nest but in terms of being artistic and, and creative not so much so I want to be able to incorporate and inject some life and and color into this uh, so I'm going to I'm going to put more color into this. I'm going to just make sure I rinsed out that brush. I'm not sure if I did. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to start wetting this. This is dry now because I was monkeying around with my <laughs> technology there for a little while. And I'm just going to wet this. And basically what I want to do in this first initial layer is just get rid of that white paper. There's nothing in this picture that's white. I'm not doing anything white. I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in some, some really pretty colors. Um, I'll, I'll try a bit of... Let me see here. I'll try some uh, pink. 
takes. And I'm using a really big brush for this. Maybe some cobalt. Here, I'll get some cobalt in here. I'll put some cobalt more in, in where the shadow areas are. That's where I'll put that. Shadows are usually cooler, so you know that's where I'm aiming to put some of this color in here. Um, it looks kind of bright and technicolor. I'm going to put in some um, raw sienna, maybe. I think raw sienna would be a good color for some of the highlight areas. So we'll put some of that in. Now some of this can mix and mingle, but I sure don't want to be brushing it around too much. If I brush it around a lot, I've got three primary colors here, that will turn into mud in no time flat. So I want to make sure that I'm not creating mud. I'm putting all these colors down side by side, but I'm not, I'm just letting them um, blend together organically. I'm not using my brush to manipulate, move things around too much. I'm going to put in some more red, I think. Ooh, that was a bright red. Hold on. That might be a little overkill. So I'll spread that out a little bit. Let's get a little more blue in here, too. You know what I'd like in here, too, maybe? Oh, some cobalt would be pretty. <clears throat> Not cobalt. I just put cobalt in. I meant to say uh, cobalt turquoise. Beautiful color. I want to put a little of this in because it's going to be similar to the robin's eggs. So this is a cobalt turquoise. There we go. How's that for a colorful nest? All right. So this point I need to dry things. I'm going to take some paper towel. I'm going to wipe off all this extra that's on my tape, which I want to do because I really don't want to make blossoms. I mean blossoms wouldn't be a big deal anyway because they'll pretty much be hidden under all of this, but um, let's dry off this the eggs too. And I do have some puddles where the paper's wrinkling up a bit. I'm getting some puddles. So what I can do about that type of thing is I'll just sort of rip my, my paper towel here and see how I've got this like sort of fuzzy, fuzzy edge on the part that I ripped. And then that's what I'll touch into those spots. And that'll just wick, wick up. And I'm just, it's only just touching. It's not, I'm not blotting. You can see I'm just holding it way way far back and I'm just letting the point of it touch that spot to pull up the excess color. I don't want to spread it around or anything like that. Let's get a clean spot here. Tear another piece here and wick up a little bit more. And I want to wick it up so that you know I don't get a, an accumulation of a dark color in one spot. Okay, so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to quickly dry this. So what I'll do is I will put myself on mute so you don't have to listen to my noisy hair dryer. I'll move my mic a little closer.
There we go. <clears throat> Nothing like watching paint dry, right? <laughs> All right, so um, I have this dry. Now I did need to make sure that this dried thoroughly uh, so that um, if I apply masking fluid to this, that it's not going to um, become part of my paper because that's what'll happen. If you paint masking fluid on something that is a little bit on the dry side um, and um, <clears throat> so I'm going to now take my masking fluid and soak my brush one more time. Pick up my masking fluid and I'm going to start um, stroking in where I see the, the lighter areas in my, in my reference here. So where I see you know, a lot of the lighter grasses and things, that's where I'm going to be putting some of this. Not so, not so much down in the shadows, but um, the, mainly the, the lightest areas. Okay, so nice sort of wiggly, long lines. Doesn't matter if they're broken. Uh, that's the greatest thing about doing something like this. And, and this technique is something that could easily, easily be used for all kinds of things. Like you can imagine uh, grasses, like if you're doing a um, uh, something in your garden and you have grasses or a landscape of some kind and um, you want to paint all these grasses, but they never look right when you paint just green grasses, right? It, it, it doesn't look right. It looks cartoony somehow. So, and, and the reason being is that the grasses are lighter than the spaces between the grasses. And so this helps with that. So I want to make sure that these crisscross and wiggle a little bit because because they're all kind of woven in together. And we'll just go around like painting this. Sorry, getting um, let me turn that off. I'm painting lots of thin, thick lines. You know, make sure it's a combination. Uh, It'll look more natural if it's uh, not all exactly the same. But I'm following the contour of the, the nest. I'm always going to start with, you know, the highlight areas when I'm doing this type of thing. And this would be great, you know, if you've had a little too much coffee <laughs> and your hand's a little shaky, then that's probably even better, right? You don't want these all too smooth and and uh, wiggling like worms kind of thing. They're they're kind of like kind of like uh, wiggly, but uh, it's really quite um, amazing how they make these. How they build, you know, how, how they even know to build it. I mean, I know it's it's instinct, but it's hard to believe that. You know, without without the benefit of hands, without the benefit of language, you know how these birds just somehow know to to build this, and that you know they need it for eggs that they're going to lay. And how do they even know they're going to lay eggs? You know, just you know, it's quite quite amazing when you think of it. All right, so a lot, I'm going to be putting some down in here too. There will be some few little lighter spots throughout, but I'm going to put lots of sort of wiggly little lines here. It's not the most exciting uh, demo to watch, but I want you to see I want you to see the result of it because the result of it is is the where all the magic happens when this masking fluid comes off then you see what you're ended up, what you've ended up with 
um, it's kind of like a big reveal, you know, you cover up so much stuff and then you don't see it again until the very end. You don't actually get the full impact of what you've done till the end. But just think you're always work, going to be working light to dark, light to dark, light to dark. And don't be too skimpy with the lines. Like, I mean, there can be a lot of them. Um, trying to do this without putting my hand in it. I like using a brush for masking fluid more than than using like a like a you know some people will use the sticks or those little rubberized um, tools I forget what they're called but um, they have a name but I can't think of what it is at the moment so this makes me think of spring and how much I would really like to have spring again I guess it's not that far away I had to laugh at the at the groundhog that said six more weeks of spring or six more weeks of winter that is it was six six more weeks of winter anyway <laughs> on the calendar <laughs> so okay I almost want to have two different brushes for this, just so that I get more <clears throat> variation in uh, in my line. But if I want if I want thinner lines, I can also flatten out my brush. So I can take a round brush like this and and sort of flatten it like that, and then use like the chisel edge of it, and you know, so I splayed it out. And then I can use the chisel edge for painting some finer lines. But you want to make sure that you got stuff going in all different directions. That's the way it is, right? It's and obviously I'm not going grass for grass here. I'm not uh, trying to do it do it exactly like the picture. I want the feeling from the picture. I like this. All right, so I'm just going to give that a second just for that to dry. I haven't put the paint on or the masking on uh, especially thick uh, because I knew it would take too long for this to dry. Uh, but this process is very interesting because it, um, it allows you to sort of build it up in glazes. And so you can build, I'll, I'll put another bunch of color on here. Eventually, I will start bringing in the, some of the duller colors. As we get darker, they usually will get a little bit uh, duller as well. So um, let me just see if I can minimize this uh, nest here a little bit, make it a little bit smaller so it's not taking up quite so much space. There we go. And uh, now I'm just going to read through some comments here. Uh, a color shaper. Yes, thank you, Tony. That's what that's called. Um, yeah, I'd forgotten what that was called. Yeah. Hi, Flo. Sabna. Uh, Amarjeet, 
So, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of friends here today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, I try and offer different things. This, this one was actually a request by uh, someone who said that they wanted to know how to paint a nest. And so um, I took them up on this, and uh, so that's what I'm doing here. So I want to make sure that this masking fluid is fully dry. I've just leaned over to the side sort of see it. You know, is there any anything sticking up that looks like it might still be wet? It's always going to feel a little bit rubbery because, well, that's the nature of, of masking fluid. It actually is liquid latex um, in suspended in an ammonia um, formula that uh, creates masking fluid. So it's always going to have that rubbery feel about it. Uh, it's, that's not going to go away. But you, you know, if you get any on your fingers, well, then it's definitely not dry enough. So I'm going to come back to my large brush again. This is a number one silver black velvet oval brush, which I like very much. Uh, it holds a lot of water. It, it has this nice point and everything. Now I, I don't really need, I don't really need it for painting too specifically here because this is a little bit like a pour. If you've ever heard of the technique of watercolor pouring, it's um, it's when you take your your colors and you actually make cups of, of color and you literally pour it on saving saving areas that are whiter or lighter with masking fluid just as I'm doing right now so this isn't exactly a pour but it is a similar concept so I'm gonna come in now and I'm gonna start building up more color so basically I'm just kind of adding more in here more of this color and I'm working on dry this time but I'm, I'm using a big brush and I'm liberally um, applying colors as you can see and letting them sort of mix and blend eventually this will dull down and get less bright it seemed really bright at the start but as we go along it's going to um, it, it will not seem so bright the colors will mingle a little bit more and it won't won't have that same sort of technicolor feel about it as it does at the very start. So don't begin with dull colors because you'll end up with a really dull painting. So start a little bit brighter than you might expect. It's really easy to dull things down. It's not easy to brighten them up again. So something to keep in mind. This is that cobalt turquoise, which I like. Bring some of that in here. And you can see, even, even as I'm sort of brushing it in and it's hitting other colors and, and melting, it's dulling down the color a little bit. So don't start dull, because it's going to get duller as you go. All right, so there's layer number two. I think I've got all of it. Let me see. I'm going to put a little bit more turquoise in here. I really like this turquoise color gorgeous. All right, so I have put another layer on. I'm going to set my brush aside, wipe off my edges once again, and give it another dry. We will have to be careful. If you're blow drying this, you have to be careful not to use the heat setting on your dryer. The heat setting, mine has a, a cool button. So I use, I press that cool button as I'm drying because it will um, not heat up my masking fluid, which is really important. If you heat your masking fluid up, you might not get it off again. It's like baking it on there. So you want to be very careful. Um, it, it is the kind of thing that you'll really want to be making sure you're using uh, fresh masking fluid as well. Nothing thick or gummy. Use fresh. If you go to the store, no, I guess we can go to the stores here in on some areas of Ontario at least, we can go to the store again. Um, but if you go to the store and you pick up a bottle of masking fluid and you, you do this to it, you know, give it a little, if you don't hear, if you don't hear that slush, slush sound, put it back on the shelf. Because it, if it doesn't have any fluidity to it, um, it you're going to struggle with it. 
So I actually did miss a spot here. I'm just going to paint a little bit in there. I think I'll do some cobalt maybe. There we go. A little cobalt in that spot. Get a little darker right down here. Oh, I got a little pocket right between those eggs too. I'll get in there. All right. So take off some of the excess, just barely touching, and then I'm going to dry one more time. Sorry, I know that drying's not very exciting, <clears throat> but it is a necessary part here. I always send out all my paperwork flying when I do this, so uh, I'm going to mute while I while I dry. Okay. You know, in hindsight, this probably would have been better as a time lapse rather than a live video just because of the amount of dry time. But c'est la vie. Okay, so back to my masking brush. And I am going to repeat what I just did. Only this time, I won't be putting in the same places as I did previously. I'll be putting in a little bit more. And this is a process that I can um, repeat uh, as many times as I want. And before, before we're done, we have like a lot of masking fluid on here. So let me see. I won't do as many layers as I could potentially do because this is a demonstration and it you know, takes too long to dry. But I'm going to come in and uh, keep adding more on top of what I've done and also a little bit more in the mid-tone areas of the nest. It makes sense for me to do all this stuff here and then come over here instead of reaching over what I've just done, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Flatten out my brush a little bit more. They're pretty 
good engineers, these little robins. Like they build a good sturdy nest. And then you get birds like morning doves. <laughs> they kind of slap three sticks together and call it a nest. Done. They're a little bit lazy, not the fastest bird. <clears throat> but um, but they're pretty. Morning doves. I love this, this, the freedom of this, that you can just, you know, you really, how can you mess it up? It's pretty hard to do because, you know, it's just a bunch of long lines and they don't have to be straight. They're just wiggly. <clears throat> Now this blue masking fluid is a little harder to see on the blue areas that I've done. But fortunately I don't really need to see too much. I can, I can work pretty well with just guessing. Every once in a while you get one of these sort of strays that kind of just comes out and a friend of mine posted a picture they saw Robin the other day. Imagine. I guess this little guy didn't get the memo that they were supposed to go south. We here in southern Ontario have had uh, crazy snow over the last few days. We've had snowstorms. We actually just sort of went to a new phase of the lockdown here as of yesterday and um, <laughs> the schools were supposed to resume and got cancelled because of the snow day <laughs> for the first day back which is kind of crazy but oh well. All right, so I'm just coming in here. I'm going to get some more over here. That jittery, too much coffee kind of stroke is, is actually good for this. So this was a request by Sharon. I, Sharon, I don't know if you're here. I hope you are. I hope you're watching. Otherwise, you can watch the replay, I suppose. But um, yeah, if you think anybody would like to see this, then uh, you know you can hit share right now and let them know. It's always better to see it live because uh, you know if they have a questions or if I I miss explaining something and you know you can always ask a question you can't do that with a replay replays are good but um and sometimes they're good to watch as a review right you can see it and uh you know think if you missed something you can you can watch it again or if you forgot a part that you would just replay it you can fast forward through all my technical difficulties <laughs> That's one thing, I guess. And I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting better at this. I just, you know, thank you for your patience. But I'm not. Uh, we artists, you know, we're trying to adapt during COVID and, and we're doing our best, right? That means learning. It's, it's, so it's, it's learning for me, too. I'm just doing lots and lots of this stuff. Oh, that was a big one. Doesn't matter. It's actually quite a sizable nest for the for the size of the eggs, but uh, there you have it. That's what it is. It is what it is. Oh, that was a big blob. Oh well. Okay. Doesn't matter. My 
brush is starting to get a lot of buildup on it of the masking fluid. So it's probably gets, when it gets to this point where you can see, where you can see like a lot of, a lot of the masking fluid is, is uh, caked sort of up near the ferrule and that sort of thing. That's the time when you want to sort of take your masking brush and give it a rinse, but you'll have to soap it again. So uh, I think I'm going to do that just so I don't totally lose the shape of my brush. And you can see there's there's actually, I've, I've got a little bit that's kind of stuck on there, which isn't good. But you know, if, if that does happen to you, if you get masking fluid and it gets stuck, uh, the thing to use is uh, Goo Gone, okay, Goo Gone, G-O-O-G-O-N-E, which is a uh, product that you can get, you can get it at Michael's, you can get it at the hardware store. It's basically designed for taking the, the gummy um, labels off of uh, things that you buy at the store and it gets, has a gummy label. Well, the gum is made of uh, rubber, latex, and so therefore it dissolves it and it does the same in your brushes. So if you ever get a brush that's kind of messed up because of the masking fluid, just work it in some Goo Gone for a while and uh, brand new brush. You'll, you'll get it all out. Just don't get too much of it up into the uh, ferrule part of your brush. The ferrule part of your brush is actually where the bristles are glued in. You don't want to dissolve, dissolve that part. So just, just the bristle part that you're actually painting with, that's the part that you can use the Goo Gone on. I, I usually just pour it in a cup and uh, just sort of massage the bristles of the brush in, in just maybe three or four drops of, of this uh, Goo Gone solution. And uh, voila, the brush is fine. So I just re-soaked my brush. I'm going to come in and just add a little bit more. And You know, there's a lot of this. I want to make sure that I've got thin, thick, curving lines, straight lines, uh, you know, all kinds of variety in here. I don't want to make it too formulaic. I actually do kind of a squiggle, squiggle thing once in a while. Okay, I'm rinsing that out. Clean off my brush, make sure it's got all that masking gone. Okay, and give that just another minute to dry and I'm going to add more color. So I can repeat this any number of times that I want to, uh, but the effect is really great. Um, oh, thank you, Doreen. Um, yeah, this is like the first time I've actually been able to read the, the chat. So I'm using a new um, software here, a new one. I'm, I'm not going through Zoom to do this or anything. So it's... Uh, Sorry, I was just reading. Uh, Marilyn, I am using soap to coat my brush with uh, before dipping it in the masking fluid. And the soap is, is it acts like, a, you know, barrier cream for your hands. You know, you, you don't wanna, like mechanics will put barrier cream on their hands so that they don't get all the grease from the, um, uh, you know, working on bars and stuff like that um, embedded in their hands. And, and um, so it coats, coats the brush so that the masking fluid won't stick to and wreck your brush. So it, it's like when you've got gum in your hair as a kid and getting it out, you know, yeah, it, it, that's what happens if you don't put some soap in your brush. And it doesn't have to be a, a special kind of soap. It can be, it could be regular, um, you know, liquid soap, a, a bar of soap. Uh, this, I just happen to be using brush cleaning soap. Um, but any kind of soap will, will repel the um, the latex that's in the masking fluid, which which is the part that can dry and make all your bris bristles stick together and, and 
um, I actually took a brush. I have a demo on my YouTube channel. If, you, um, if you're so inclined, I've got a lot of tips in my YouTube channel. Uh, my, if you go to YouTube and in the search bar you put Shelley Pryor Fine Art, uh, you'll find me and there'll be some uh, tutorials in there, some on watercolor, some on acrylic. Um, I will be adding more this year. Uh, I, I've been quite active on um, YouTube, but unfortunately a lot of the um, videos are not public because they are recordings of my uh, Zoom workshops that I do on Fridays. Uh, you can find uh, the links to, to all my social media, like my, my Instagram, my YouTube, my Facebook, um, uh, on my website, which is ShellyPrior.com. So it's pretty easy to find. Just scroll down to the bottom, you'll find all my links. Uh, my Zoom workshops, I spent uh, most of yesterday um, updating, uh, I haven't gone, I haven't published it yet, but I spent most of yesterday uploading a lot of uh, new projects for the spring. So uh, watch for that in the next couple of days because uh, I, I just have to, a couple more to add and, and, and need to sort of proofread through and make sure I haven't made any mistakes and stuff with uh, buttons and stuff. So uh, yeah, me and tech, <laughs> yeah, I was, it's a big learning curve, but, uh, but I'm getting there. Uh, yeah, spring, spring is coming. Yay, finally. Um, like it won't be too long, right? It can't be too long. So uh, back to my big brush. This, this is dry enough now. I can, I can paint over this. I don't have anything on here that's really thick. The nice thing about all these sort of thin, thin strokes is they really don't take any time at all to dry. So I can just keep building up here. So let's just keep coming in and, and I'm going to add in... Uh, you know more golds and you know actually a lot I'm gonna get in more golds because this is pretty it's a pretty dark uh, you know like it's it's not as technicolor the colors underneath will still show through when you paint with watercolor it um, it's like the difference between um, a piece of colored acetate versus a piece of construction paper. Stick them both in your window. Which one glows, right? It's the acetate, of course. And so that's the difference between using transparent color and opaque color, right? So uh, the transparent color glows. So you, you hear all the time people saying, well, you know, transparent watercolor, transparent watercolor. Well, yeah, great, but what does that mean? And, and that's, that's the gist of it, right? You know, you're gonna get that sort of difference between watercolor and say acrylic. The, the paper is actually allowing some of that light to come through. All right, so I'm getting some, some more colors in here. By the time I get the last of this on here, it will look, it's going to look pretty dark. It's also going to be covered mostly with masking fluid. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to start getting a little bit more with, with blues, maybe even some, I can start coming in with some more earthy type colors here. So I'm going to get some, uh, burnt sienna going here too. So I'm going to start coming in with a bit of burnt sienna in a few places. And even if I'm putting colors on top and things are getting dull, those, that underlying color, it's going to come through and that's where the glow comes from in watercolor. Let me see here. Leaning over to one side, just so you can see if I've missed spots. Um, and I'm sure I have, but won't matter because I'll get it on the next go, right? And start getting some cooler, darker colors down here on the, 
on the left side and definitely up in here. All right, there's quite a bit of color on there now and I'm going to do another wipe and dry. I'm going to wipe, I'm going to just blot off the excess on the eggs as well. And the reason I'm doing that on the tape and on the masking fluid, you know, the larger areas of the masking fluid, is because those little beads of paint that are sitting on top can blow around with the hair dryer. And, th and they won't dry as fast as what's actually on the paper because the, the paper's absorbent. Um, uh, Barbara, I would do um, as many layers as you want, but I think the more you do, the more believable it becomes. You know, the more convincing it come it becomes. And, uh, you know, you could do lots and lots and lots of layers on here. And, and the result is, is amazing. And, you know, I may, I, I'm not sure that for the whole uh, thing that I'll be able to, to do that much, but, uh, you know, unless you want to be, unless you want to be here a little while. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I'm going to take the dryer here. I'm just going to sop a little bit of the excess up. I'm going to take the dryer and one more time I'm going to dry this. How do you not get mud when you're laying in the colors? It's because I'm I'm not putting blue at, like here you can sort of see I've got yellow, here pre predominantly blue and here predominantly pink. I'm not taking my brush and brushing from one color to another and then back again and then this color and then this color because those are three primaries. When you mix three primaries, that's when you're getting mud. So that's, you know, you just keep thinking, you know, I can add two of them together, two of them together, like if I get pink and blue, I'll, I'll end up with some purple. If I put blue and yellow, I'll get some green and that sort of thing. But you get them all together, it starts getting quite muddy. So uh, these, these transparent colors, I'm deliberately not putting blues on top of my uh, golds. You know, I, I'm, I am consciously thinking of where I'm putting the colors. I know it just se seemed like it was really random and everything, uh, but you know, I was trying to put the cooler, darker colors, like the blues and such, in the shadow areas, and I'm keeping the golds and, and the peachy red colors in the highlight areas. So when, when I have a light source coming this way and it's shading this inside of the nest, that's where I'm putting my cools. On this outside of the nest, you know, where the plane kind of com comes down like this again, you know, the light doesn't get there. So that is getting more of the cool color. So even though I'm sort of just sort of putting them on and not worried about where, you know, keeping them in specific areas, I am generalizing. I, I, I'm generally keeping my light colors to these uh, lighter areas. I might put a little bit more gold in here just just to get a little bit more of this gold in the highlight areas there okay so generally speaking I find that in sunshine you're going to have all your all your things that are in Sun are going to be more towards the gold tones in general uh, when you want something to look like it's in the Sun it's usually not um, as bright white as you might think. It's usually a warmer color like a gold. Um, so I'm going to dry this now. I will mute one more time. Cue the, cue the music. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, I won't do that.
Okay, I'm back. Um, one, one thing to say, uh, you know, when, when you were asking about mud, uh, mud, a lot of what I mask off is covering up those sort of first colors that were pretty fresh. So when that masking comes off, that won't be muddy underneath there. As we progress to darker and darker colors, yeah, things will get a little bit muddy, but they're in the shadows and that is typical of shadows. So I'm not really concerned too much, you know, getting to this point if I'm creating a little bit of mud because that's just going to make things look a little more earthy. I mean, when you look at the real colors of this, that, you know, it, it is pretty dull, like it's dark, but it's, it's really, I'm building up to sort of like these darkest darks in between here. So I'm going to get back to my masking fluid here. I think I'm going to need actually a little bit more running low so put a little bit more in my cup here set the lid put the lid back on i always i always put the lid back on my masking fluid right away and pour it into a cup first of all it's easier to dip my brush into a cup than that bottle but secondly because um i want to keep what's in the bottle fresh so i want to Pour it out, put the lid right back on it as fast as I can. It, I mean, there's still air inside, but it's the best chance I have for keeping it fresh longer, uh, you know, as opposed to keeping the lid off of it. So I'm going to add a little bit more cobalt. No, actually, you know what? I don't really need to at this stage because I'm painting. I'm not painting on white paper, so I don't need to tint it. So I'm just going to go right into my masking fluid with my soapy brush. Don't forget to soap it again. I really do a good number with the soap, you know, really get it, get it uh, on there. All right, so might actually be able to see this now, at least until it dries, then, then you won't see it again. It'll be kind of invisible, but Sometimes you can't see what's been masked and what's not, so just keep masking. And eventually, you'll have nothing but little pockets of uh, bare paper showing between all the masking. More masking, more masking. Grasses in a field or something like that, you know, this is this is a great way to do it. When you do grasses, you know, speaking of grasses, these are just you know brown grass is dried grass right and and I could have done it just brown uh, but I do think that you know injecting a little bit of color and life into this makes it a lot more creative a little bit more appealing as a painting you know when you work from photography it, it's good you know and it will it will look you know like like the subject uh, you know you'll paint it and it'll be good and everything but it's going to look too much like the photograph. I find photos tend to sort of flatten things. And what I mean by that is that you, you don't see all of the real um, true color of things in a photograph. You've probably noticed in, in a lot of your photographs, like if you take a picture of somebody in the sun, the shadow side of their face is kind of like almost so dark, you can't see any of the color in there. It just looks gray. It just looks kind of dark. 
the highlight areas sometimes can get blown out. Um, you know, sometimes you you can't see the edges of anything because it's so blown out by the sun in a photo. The photos, uh, you know, cameras have limitations, at least, you know, your everyday cameras, um, you know, unless you're a professional photographer and everything like that, uh, you, um, you know, you may not have all the settings to, to adjust things exactly as you would like them for painting references. Uh, so if you can learn a little bit about, you know, Photoshop and, and how to edit things, and even if you don't have Photoshop, I mean, most iPhones, like my iPhone, you can edit your photos and adjust stuff and, and increase the contrast or, or highlights or shadows or, you know, whatever it is you need. You can um, add more color, change the tints. You can, you know, if you've never actually taken your photos and put them into that edit, uh, option on your iPhone, <laughs> give it a try. It it, it it's uh, got a lot of little features in there that you could use. Um, certainly, people who do social media stuff, um, you know, have learned that you've you've got to take your photos and make them look better to post on social media because on social media. Um, dull, dull photos, dull and dark, just don't, don't grab anybody's attention, you know, so learn a little bit about it. I, I find that it's easier too for me to paint if I can like visually see what it is I'm painting. Uh, so if I have a reference picture and I want to um, manipulate it for painting, I find that easier to do than when I'm looking at a bad picture and trying to work from the bad picture and do all the edits with my paint. Uh, I find it easier to just take it into a photo editing program to begin with. Uh, I just find that easier personally if I'm working from photos. You know, I'm doing, oops, that's kind of a dotted line. That wasn't a very smooth line. And you can see I'm kind of hurrying this up a little bit now. So I don't want to make this demo just masking, masking, masking. I don't want to get to the point where I actually take this off and, and make it look like something. So I could do like all kinds of layers on here, but I think what I'll do next is I'll just go to really dark. And um, so I'll, to, I'll do as much masking as I can on this layer instead of doing two. I, some, I lean over to the side sometimes because if I can't see very well um, what I'm putting down, so I'm leaning over because I can see the shine on the masking fluid and then I can see what I'm doing. I don't need to worry about too much out from the edges here. Uh, I'm not going to fuss as much with that because really the focal point is right here, which I kind of put right in the middle of the paper, which it's okay for a demo, but I wouldn't do a painting this way, you know. Uh, it's a little bit too smack in the middle, you know, like a fried egg kind of thing. 
Ooh, shouldn't say fried eggs. Poor little Robin's, Robin's eggs. I didn't mean it. All right, let me see here. Maybe a couple little strokes up in here. And I'll come in with some real darks this time. And I don't know, time-wise, time I don't know if it's uh, smart for me to, to even attempt to try to do the eggs today, but um, I'll, I'll do the nest part anyway. Uh, the eggs are pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. So cleaning off all the masking fluid out of my brush. All right. Shape it again. All right, just set that aside. And just give the last coat, just give it another minute or so to, for that to dry. Um, I'm going to read right through here some of the, some of the comments. So I can actually answer at the same time. Um, no, no, no. Ooh, minus minus twenty in Chicago, Ratna. Oh, yikes! Oh, well, it's pretty it's pretty cold here too. Um, but uh, yeah, this is making up for our January, which was uh, predominantly warm for. Or a January in Ontario. All right, so I've got a, I've got a couple of little bits up there. I'm going to start mixing up some dark color here now. Um, I've got little bits of latex floating around in my little bucket, so I'm going to change that. Don't want that on my brush. So what I might end up doing with this one is, um, since I, I ended up sort of putting it right in the middle of my painting, is I might end up cropping it somehow, you know. There's always that option, right? So I'm going to come in now with some of the real dark darks that are going to be in here. And those, those are pretty dull. I don't really care that those are dull. I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna. Uh, and I want to make it darker. So I'm, I think instead of putting blue into that, I'm going to put a little Payne's gray. So that's give, going to give me a real dark, dark brown. Oops. I think I just went into the wrong color there. I went into some uh, cream gold and I ended up with something different. Oh well. So I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna and that's that's a real dirty muddy warm blackish kind of color so and I do see some things that are still not quite dry yet so I do have to wait um, in terms of my paper I was talking earlier about my paper and, and 140 pound and I know there's a lot of people who use arches arches is one of the top quality papers. There's a lot of other good ones in there. Fabriano's really, really nice paper as well. Uh, there's some, um, 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 the, uh, the uh, 140 means that a, a ream of paper, so 500 sheets, that's the weight of it. So that's where that, that number comes in. Cold press just means that the, the press wasn't heated up and so if the press isn't heated up as it's sort of rolling out the paper, then um, the fibers don't get as compacted as they would if you were using a hot press. You know, think of a hot press as like when you iron something, it s compresses the fibers and makes it smooth. So your hot press paper is a lot smoother. Uh, the, the initial colors that I used for my, um, you know, primaries, Barbara, were, uh, I used some, 
raw sienna. That was my yellow. I didn't go to a bright yellow in this case. I, I kept it kind of neutral because they were dried grasses. Uh, so that was my yellow, it was raw sienna. And then I used um, um, a little bit of alizarin crimson for my red. And I used cobalt blue for my blue. So that's that's what I used. And I kept my, my golds, my reds in the highlight areas. And I kept my uh, blues in the shadow areas. So generally, I, that's where I placed it. I masked off my, my uh, eggs to make the task a little easier. And um, yeah, I still got something sticking up here. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. So this paint now that I'm putting in, I wanna talk about the consistency of it because I don't wanna put down really watery paint for my shadows. I wanna put in something you know, when it's my last layer, so my paint is starting off very thin, um, quite diluted, and then it builds up until it's it's darker. It's also richer, like, and that's how one of the ways you get it darker is, is by putting less water in it. So by the time you get to your last layer, you're going to have a really um, uh, buttery type of consistency. Um, not not quite butter, but it, it's like cream, you know, thick like cream. So here we go with some darks. And this looks dramatic, but remember that I'll, I have a lot protected under here. There's a lot that's protected. Okay, so I'm gonna take a few little dark squiggles like this for the outside branches. You know, some of them are light, but some of them are some of them will be dark too. So I'm just getting up on the tiptoe of this this uh, brush for those outside sections. But basically all this, all this gets filled in. Look at that, I'm already running out of paint. I'll get some more in here. Obviously, I'm not being like super duper careful here. I'm just, uh, you know, I just want to get some branchy type stuff around the outsides there. All right, so ah, I can hardly wait to take that masking off now. We'll see what we end up with. Um, I can tell you right now that a lot of what I end up with is probably going to be too light, but. Uh, will come in and we can we can sort of glaze down over top of things as well so i'm going to dry this one more time Okay, so um, 
that layer didn't take as long to dry because I didn't, you know, when I was doing the first layers, everything, I wet the paper first, then I put wet paint down, and a lot of that was absorbing into the paper. But now that I have a lot of masking fluid on here, uh, there's not as much absorbing into the paper. Plus I was using my, uh, I was working on dry paper and my paint was a little thicker. So subsequent layers don't take as long to dry as the very first ones. The first ones are quite slow. And you do really have to make sure that you've dried the first on there. Um, the brand of masking that I'm using is Demco Artist Series. Uh, but there's a lot of really good brands out there. I mean, uh, Windsor Newton makes a, an excellent one. Um, PBO makes an excellent one. Uh, sometimes it's called drawing gum. Sometimes it's called uh, brisket, misket. Uh, I've heard it called all kinds of things, but basically it's all the same. And uh, so, so any brand's fine, just as long as it's fresh. That the freshness is is important. And just because you buy it in the store, um, doesn't mean it's fresh. Sometimes, before it gets to the store, it's been sitting in a warehouse for a year. So. That's why I say when you go to the store to buy masking fluid, you know, pick up the bottle and, and give it a little bit of a shake just to hear whether or not it's fluid. You want to make sure that you're starting off with the freshest possible masking. Masking. All right, so now that that's off, I'm going to take my little masking tool. This is a uh, rubber cement rubber cement eraser it's called and it's a pickup tool and it's like uh, crepe it's made of crepe uh, you know the crepe soles that they did in the 70s so this is cooled off I mean it really wasn't hot anyway but I'm gonna start pulling this off off comes the masking and there will be a little bit of work to do to this nest before I actually um, could call it done because it's not going to look finished it's still going to look a little cartoony but the um, the highlights will really show right. sometimes you can grab a wad of the the stuff and that takes it off too uh, but I like this tool. And you can see, you know, that those fresh colors that I put down at first, they are, they're still bright underneath there. You know, they still have, you know, they're not muddy. Even though the last layers that I put down were kind of muddy, these ones aren't. And it really looks woven in here because uh, because of the way that I did it so I rather than trying to paint these slivers that all have all have these really tiny little points and things like that uh, you can do it that way but boy that's a it's it can be a trend tremendous amount of uh, fiddly work so I uh, come in here and pull some of this off oh, making a mess here Masking fluid is one of those things you can't always see it with with your eyes. Like I run my hand over it to see spots that I've missed because you can always feel when you hit that rubbery feeling that you've missed a spot. If you don't have one of these tools, um, a piece of masking tape works great too. The sticky side out. The sticky side... Um, wrap it around your finger like this sticky side out you know and this this pulls it off great too right that works really well you can see it all it sticks to the sticky side of masking tape very well makes your finger hot though i like my other tool all right so you can see that you know by doing lots and lots of layers how um, how developed this could get. Uh, this is this is very this is sort of demo mode, so we're not really getting into too much 
of it, but I want to come in and embellish a little bit here. I don't want to leave it just like this. It looks a little bit unfinished, so I'm going to come in and do a little bit to this just to finish it off. But first, the masking fluid has to be gone. So I would suggest, you know, maybe when you're doing your first layers, don't do them quite as light as you might think. Like, make them maybe a little bit darker. Um, This is the tool I'm using, it's called Pick Up Rubber Cement Eraser. And it works great for this, it sticks very well to the crepe. Alright, so I think I've mostly got it off, but I'm sure I've missed a few spots, so give it another pass here. A few little bits and pieces every once in a while. You can always feel the masking fluid, even if you can't see it. Okay, so that's going to be, I think that's going to be good enough. Probably missed a spot or two, but that went be too earth shattering. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside, and you know it's looking a little, a little bit anemic at the moment. So I can come in and do a little bit of glazing over top of this. So, so here on the inside, for example, and I want to get it toned down a little bit. So I'm gonna take this, uh, this color I did earlier. A little bit more burnt sienna in it, maybe. All right, so I can come in and I can just glaze over some of this. I'll leave that one little funny one light and work around that. And I'm just going to glaze, glaze in some. darker color in here. I will have to be careful around these eggs now. But even after I glaze over top, even so, even now, some of this is showing through because I'm working transparently. So I've thinned down my color. I'm not working with uh, a lot in my brush. I, I'm just picking up a round brush. This is a 12 round. And I'm just going to glaze in a little bit more color. And by glazing, I just mean thin, thin layer that's actually going to allow some of the under layers to show through. So that's what I mean by glazing. And I can go through and, and down things if I want to add more of, of these uh, gold tones in here for example I could do a little bit of that in here I'm just flicking it in like like um, like the the grassiness that it is just so they don't look like they're just cut out little slivers of paper that were stuck down right so this uh, breaks it up a little bit. You know, I could actually have spattered on a bit of color here as well if I wanted to for a little bit of texture. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, 
toning down that a little bit. And I can build a little bit on top of this, but I, I don't want to cover up everything I've done. That would kind of defeat the purpose of all that masking and everything that we did. But I want to get just a little more variation in what has been exposed from the masking fluid. So I think I think our nest is, is getting pretty close to done here. I'm going to um, just sort of dry brush a little bit in here because that's that makes the, the grasses look uh, a little bit more natural. So dry brushing just means that my brush, I didn't dip it into my water. It, it's damp because I had been painting with it, but I am uh, picking up some paint here that you can see it's not really a puddle. Well, maybe I need to move that down so you can see. So it's not really a puddle. Um, like I can actually sort of draw a, a line through there and it stays there. And then you can see that that's not a, like a really wet puddle there. So that's, that's the dry brush. And then I just gently drag it over top for a bit of texture. I could spatter a bit on here if I wanted as well. But I'm just going to drag this along to get some texture. All right, so it has lots of colors in it, a lot more lively than just the plain reference, right? Which the plain reference is fine, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a lot of life, especially with the, that color combination there. So. You know, and you can fiddle and play a little bit. Just don't cover up everything you've done. That, that's the important thing. So I can tone down, like if I kind of like the blues that are in here, but it's, oh, maybe it's a little bit lighter than I want it. Uh, you know, tone it down. So I can take, take some blues in here, for example, and put some blue, blues where I see the blue areas. So I don't want to really kill the color. I, I kind of like the color. I like the fact that it's blue in there and pink over here and it's not that way in the photo but I like that so I can put a little bit more in there and I can you know develop this up and to any degree that I want anyway so that's that and uh, I'll uh, paint in the little uh, the little eggs let's see if I can do that really fast huh. I'm in for a penny. Oh, I'm in for a penny. I'm in for a pound. I might as well try and finish it up. So uh, that's very much a cerulean type of blue. I'm going to uh, paint. You know, let me rinse that out. And uh, I'm going to paint a little clean water right here. And I'm going to paint around it. Now, these eggs are very blue, very blue, but I'm probably going to put a little bit of other color in there too, just because I think that by doing so, um, it will sort of finish this off and make it look a little bit more painterly. So I'm going to take this, this blue here, All right, I've got that little highlight there, and I might put a little, little pink on this side. That's the highlight side, right? Just 
just a little bit. Don't want too much. It's still predominantly blue. I just, I just want a little bit of color in there. And let's get a little bit more cerulean, less, less diluted this time. I'm going to come in and get this sort of shadow put around the outside. Okay, so there's there's one egg. Looks better when the eggs are painted, right? Um, now I don't want the next one to run, so uh, no, I'll go. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing. So again, I'm coming in with my. This is cerulean blue I'm using. I'm working on dry. I'm using a number 12 round. This one is a natural hair brush, but a synthetic brush would be okay. This is kind of a detail thing. Uh, when I'm working on dry, I want to make sure my paint is uh, not too dry in my brush because uh, if it's too dry in my brush, it just kind of grabs and sticks to the paper and then you'll get hard lines and things. The video stopped. Am I still here? Maybe they have a cutoff. Maybe maybe Facebook doesn't let me keep going. Maybe I've overstayed my time. But I'll finish this and I'll paint this anyway. Oh, it's on again. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, I thought I was gone. I was still painting away though, as you could see. I figured out after this, I will just uh, post the, the finished painting. I'm kind of mucking up this uh, this last one. I put too much color down. You see, that's that's the difference between keeping, um, keeping your paint transparent and putting too much down. If you put too much down, it blocks the light, the, the light being the the paper from underneath right so i don't want to lose that so i'm coming back in and i'm re-wetting all of this so that i can soften this up there we go all right And I suppose, uh, I suppose Facebook probably does have a um, cutoff time. I don't know how long I have. No idea. All right. So one more egg to do, and it's it's again, it's mainly just um, uh, cerulean blue. This one I don't really see a highlight on, but I've included more of the eggs, so I'm going to put a little bit of highlight in maybe that area right there. These two are going to run together. I just know it. Okay. Come in with a little more color around this side. And 
I need to soften that highlight in the middle of this. This clean one is like a blotted brush. Ugh, that brush is, that towel is really too wet. Touch my brush to that, that spot and let it soak up. That'll give you my highlight. If this were, if this were a glass egg, uh, it would have a much shinier highlight. Oh, three hours on Facebook. Oh, that, uh, that's good to know, Debbie. Thanks. Yeah, well, I won't be going three hours. I have a class in a, in an hour, <laughs> so I won't be going, I won't be going that long. I just go from one class to the next. So, um, I've got a funny, you see, I shouldn't have worked those two right together. I was trying to hurry because I'm live and those two ran together. So I'm going to actually make them run together so that I can fix up that line later. I'm just going to wet all this. I had I had some ugliness happening there, so I'm just going to wet it. Clean water here. Don't like to play with these things too much. Don't like to do that. Okay, and here, clean water. Or I should say a clean brush. I'm not really putting water down. I'm just dampening that spot. Now let's try this one more time. A little more color over here on this left side. All right, I might put a little pink into that too. Pink being my glycerin crimson. Just uh, maybe a little bit, oops, that was a little more than I wanted. Have more on the brush than I thought. Let's blend that out. A little more cerulean there. Okay, so there's just slight variations in there, but uh, overall that's uh, that's the gist of it. I mean, I'll probably wait for that to dry and then probably, a, you know, fine tune or something like that. But uh, I'll post the finished picture and uh, we'll call it a day. So I have um, a really nice uh, project coming up on Friday for my Zoom workshop. If anybody's interested, it is, let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, maybe I don't even have it on here. I don't think I do. No, I don't. I don't have it on here right now. But um, uh, anyway, so that's it. So you start off with um, primary colors uh, in a wet wash, wet on wet wash, wet the paper first. Uh, allow it to dry fully. Then do start your masking in your highlight areas mostly. And then you're going to put on another layer. So more of a mid value, a light, a mid light value, and then do some more masking. A, a mid value, more masking, a mid dark value, more masking, and then finally your dark darks. I didn't do quite that many layers because of time, but, uh, but you get the gist of it anyways. Then you can finalize by coming in with a bit of dry brushing, a little bit of glazing, and that sort of thing. And uh, this looks a lot more natural than if I were to take uh, my uh, nest and try to build it, you know, with dark, just all dark lines, because then you end up with little gaps between that are all light, which don't really make sense. 
right? It doesn't make sense for those to have white lines between all of that. Uh, it's okay if you're doing a Christmas card or something, you know, like a, a, a card or something like that. But if you're trying to paint something that looks a little bit more um, uh, realistic, then, then I would take an approach like this. So, uh, but put some color in your painting. So don't don't just go by what your photo tells you. You know, in, enjoy some color in your in your art because uh, it'll make it much more interesting than just a photo. You have a photo. You don't need another one. Anyway, have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.